Are you guys ready for Test Your Might? Are you ready for the Furiosity? Oh, yeah. Easily. All right. We got Cicero and Sean here. Uh, no remix this time. Going straight in mm -hmm. with the first question coming from Marvel Snap. A uh, weird transition I set up for myself. Uh, Marvel Snap is destroying the Marvel, the mo Marvel markets, the mobile markets. <laughs> so what feature or mode should be added to take it to even higher heights? Uh, Sean, you're the guest tonight, uh, technically. Uh, go ahead. You get to decide. Would you like to go first or second today? I'll go first. All right, Sean, go ahead. Yeah. Um, all right, so Marvel Snap right now, it really only has the one mode where you go in and you instantly connect with a random person, and then it's like the you have the three zones and they do one at a time and you get six turns, yada, yada, maybe seven, depending on the zone. Um, and that's the only mode you have so far. You got to fight against people. I don't really want to change that at all. Um, what I want to add is a uh, another, like, series of competitive modes that are limited time they're kind of um like appointment viewing where you it is going to encourage you to use different types of heroes um for that type of event um and you'll know ahead of time that it's going to happen and it won't it won't necessarily be holidays but it'll be things where like hey this event is coming up um and you will use these type of characters and then maybe when you go through them um, you'll also, because it's like the, the night or the week of this thing happening, uh, it'll, you'll have a higher like percentage chance of like getting those people when you raise your collection level. It's usually mm -hmm. like you pull from a pool, um, and it's totally random, but maybe, and throughout these events, you would have a higher chance of doing it for people from that. That would be legal during that specific event, which I will get into further after Cicero introduces his idea. Mm -hmm. Justin, I've got mm -hmm. four words for you. Mm -hmm. Hellcow's already in the game. Uh, oh, that was five, sorry. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, my okay, four see. words for you are Marvel Snap Go Edition. Elaborate, so, please. <laughs> so what, what this game is missing is an element of something that that existed and was great right so you've got your game where you're you're playing against people but now if you take it outside a la you know a la pokemon go where you can find more rare cards um you can have those events against other people all across the country where you'd have the same type of battles where they're also outside, where you're using a different set of cards, you know, like they could be cards that are in, in the deck, but these are cards that are, you know, maybe they look at some cards that are, that are not being used as much and you can give them um, more, more or better attributes for when they're outside. And then you add those cards, so that will allow people to build these other decks and get the cards that are that are being less used, and allow them to have some value. And these people are connecting now across the country or across the globe, in in uh, Marvel Snap, but the Go edition. All right, Sean, let me know more about this uh, events or limited time modes that you've got going on. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I had a, I had a comparison point. Or, or you could just rip on Go. Together. It's up to you. you can no, I don't want to, I don't want to rip on Go. Um, I think that people would love to go, uh, go to like what would eventually essentially be a raid, but spend even less time there having like spend more time going to a place, like to drive 50 minutes to get to a raid and then only spend two minutes actually doing anything there. That that's, that sounds like a great idea. I don't know why anyone wouldn't want Marvel snap go. Um, uh, but anyway, my idea, Sarcasm. um, <laughs> back, back to my idea. So I want to go into some specific, um, types of events that would happen. Um, and again, it's just, you're going to be, it's going to kind of like, uh, you're, it's going to encourage creativity to make you like have a limited set of cards that are kind of legal for this mode. You can still play the other mode, but like during this week you can do, or this first one would probably just be one night. Um, we're going to have modes like ladies night where you're going to be encouraged to make a deck crafted around the ladies of Marvel, um, and try to like, just be people like that. Um, a lot of the 
deck types now are around specific, um, like a few specific, a few is probably too many, um, probably like five to six specific, like, uh, archetypes of cards, like movement, killing, um, being a jerk, um, on reveal effects, etc. Um, ladies night is you're going to kind of maybe not be able to use those same strategies as much because you're using the women who are all capable, but you can't usually do it with just the women. There's also the, oh, they fly now mode, um, which is you're using flying type people referencing, um, one of my like favorite dumb quotes from the movies. Um, and then you could also have ones. I'm less of a fan of this. Sorry, Mike. Um, because he brought this up on his own earlier, where you would have like an all X Men time, maybe around the time a movie comes out. Um, I'm less excited about that one, um, just because it's a little too shilly for me, a little too promoing. Um, but I I like the trend of like um, kind of funny na- named events that they kind of riff on their their self with and kind of encourage unique combinations you wouldn't think of otherwise. All right, Cicero, go ahead. No pun ah, yes, I will. I will go forth. Um, you know, so one of the great things about uh, doing this in a post Pokemon Go world is that you've you've had the experiences of having seen what they did right and what they could have done better, right? And and um, knowing that while well, I mean Pokemon is a juggernaut of of an IP, it arguably is not Marvel. Um, and, um, being able to lean on Marvel as, as a great resource gives you the opportunity to do wonderful things like maybe, um, there will be the opportunity to earn some super rare cards. Like we just talked about the X-Men, maybe, you know, the X-Men are being introduced. So if you go to the local library, you can battle for a chance to get beast. Mm. Right. And and like, you know, or or uh, Black Panther just came out so you could get like a rare edition of Shuri. Um, someone is super intelligent by going to different places. Um, you know, if you maybe there's like a McDonald's sponsorship. I don't know. You, you wind up over by a restaurant and you 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 wind up finding like blob or some you know some other goofy x-men like there are there are opportunities for them to do more than just like oh randomly walk to some place that we were like geocaching and you know randomly walk to a place and you'll find a gem and you'll find a pokemon and you'll catch it and you'll do you know that kind of stuff but you could actually have like marvel events but also again talking about the fights they they've got all the data right and they know what decks people are building what cards people are using and they can sit back and say oh these cards aren't being used these cards aren't being played as much even though they're being collected let's figure out to a way to make those cards have some value and it doesn't mean that you don't you know it doesn't mean that we have to change fundamentally the way that you were playing the game before the game that you had been playing but here's a new mode that is available to you that you can utilize and and these cards that you thought were you know were worthless or just kind of cool to look at actually have some tangible value within the you know strategic value within the game if you want to explore this other mode okay i do like that i do like uh, there's plenty of things that you could do with uh variance and uh faceplate for for backs of cards and also your character profile uh picture uh i'd love to find ways to get new ones and different ones outside of the game or um different ways that you're doing already in your normal life uh sean i want you to just beat down go and then cicero is going to have the same opportunity uh for your your arguments as well and then i'm going to call it okay so this is going to be just a, a wear down or a destroy oh this would have been easier if you hadn't made Cicero make the variant argument for himself. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> no thanks, Justin. <laughs> Who's on trial here? Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this one will go argument. Um I think like yes this is a neat thing to do. Like a Marvel like go situation would be pr- a lot of fun. But there's something like unique here with Marvel Snap that um they're trying to focus on this specific competitive nature with like this quick 
um, semi-random, but, like, just enough strategy to get on there. And I can't help but feel that, like, more than usual with card games, this is a hard thing to keep a balance on as they try to expand it and, like, add new territories and stuff like that. And I just truly believe if you're making, like, a third, like, just a completely kind of vestigial, not vestigial is the wrong word, but, like, unrelated, mostly unrelated arm to this game, especially at this stage of development, it's going, it can't help but take away, um, from, like, the development of the main game at hand, and, uh, like, crafting these really good card experiences that are already happening, like, even within, um, established, like, uh, collectible card game things, like, uh, with Magic the Gathering stuff, when they focus on even just, like, other modes of, that are just, like, card collecting, like, going into, like, um, the, um, instead of, like, the main game of Magic, you go to, like, Emperor, or, like, the ones where, um, you have, like, a, a preface card, and, like, are doing a specific mode like that, when they focus on that, the main game tends to suffer, and I, like, that super duper is going to happen if you do something like add a Pokemon Go onto a completely unrelated game type that is super fresh. All right. Cicero, no defense, just fight. Uh, yeah, so special events are cool, um, but, you know, I mean, like, I I get it, right? Like, you can have holiday stuff, but I feel like that's something that they would have done anyway, right? Because that's kind of what all these games that have long tails uh, in the mobile space do, is, in fact, I mean, it's even, you know, all free-to-play games do this. Destiny does it, right? Like, we're, it's the holiday time, we're going to come up with some holiday special event that's that's kind of funny and kooky and and this kind of thing so so while i do you know i mean to sean's credit i think sean has a good idea but i don't think it's a good idea that they wouldn't have come out come up with on their own anyway so you know sean's just stealing from them um so like eh, like okay fine it's a great idea and if it beats me it beats me but it's an idea that sean didn't come up with it's an idea that they would have come up with on their own. They're probably, it's probably Sean stole it from them. He went into their, their, uh, their servers. He hacked on and went and he looked at what was going on, was in a zoom in the corner. They didn't know who it was. He never said anything and stole that idea. Came back to the show and presented it as their own idea. Okay. Sean wins. Uh, <laughs> I will. Uh, I will say that I, uh, st- being quiet in a quarter and hearing everything, but not really contributing, would be my mo. So you're right on that front. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I'm pretty sure the reasoning behind uh, why Sean wins is the balancing thing. Uh, this right. is a relatively newer game, and they it is difficult to add cards that work and balance properly. Uh, that's that's what major games like Apex have problems with. Uh, so this is something they don't want to add another feature that they have to worry about balancing as well. They're going to try to stick with what they know and then add things slowly and keep that balancing throughout. Uh, Sean, you got the first one. Uh, even if you were hacking in and listening in the Zoom meeting. Uh, here we go. Inspired by Sword Art Online, there was a VR headset. I don't know if you heard about this. Designed to kill the wearer in real life when faced with a game over in the game. So, it is your job to pitch me a peripheral that would do something similar, but less, and I quote, lethal, if faced with a similar situation in-game, uh, which means it will not kill you. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, that is Cicero first. Uh, go ahead. Okay, well, you can uh, I, I, will, I will go first. Okay. I will go first. Um, so, in this game, you have been, you have been picked. You have been selected, and you must go through the rigors, um, go through the training, uh, and and it is, man, it is something. It, and you know, with this, once you've finished the training, then you finally gain the chance to wear the peripheral, and it is a gauntlet. This gauntlet slides over your hand but in order for you to use it you must chop off your finger that is right you have become an assassin 
and part of Assassin's Creed, and you have an actual gauntlet that you will use as your actual weapon as you're playing through Assassin's Creed after going through the Assassin's training. You have taken the, the oath. You have taken the creed. You are now an assassin. It doesn't get any more immersive than that. And you only lose a finger. So Hidden Blade. Hidden uh, Blade. 100%. Okay. All right, Sean, go ahead. Yeah, um, I think there is one. Video gaming is great. Being a gamer in general is great. It's a It can be a great thing. But there's one huge downside and like one like horror story that we all hear about gaming and that is the heated gamer moments and my uh peripheral is going is designed my headset is designed to prevent these from occurring um i'm going to institute that um future vr headsets institute a touch grass mode touch grass so a uh, calming sensation uh, uh kind of it it's shuts, more or it shuts off so you have to go outside essentially yeah so normal vr headsets you uh map your room right uh to do it um this you know they're gonna have to map up as much space as possible as needed to incorporate grass or a soft animal whatever can calming thing can happen um and it's going to have biofeedback um and you know they've used these before to success with like horror games like never mind um and when they when they feel the stress levels rising instead of like steering into that and making things more horrific they're going to kind of monitor it and eventually it'll be a um shutdown mode you can't just remove the helmet or like restart the helmet um it's going to go on a full lockdown until it registers that you have uh reached either this grass or this furry animal and have successfully calmed yourself down um via touching so you're stuck in the headset until you achieve that yeah absolutely mm -hmm. okay <laughs> yeah, it's not legal. all right you're stuck Cicero. here until you calm down yeah you, okay? you are uh you've got right. your hidden blade you lost right. the finger you've lost the finger um you've got a hidden blade but you are you are now in control you are an assassin so you can you can um, now hide in plain sight, not only in the game world, but in the real world. You have paid the price. You paid the iron price to to be an assassin, and you're you know sitting around, walking around with your smoke bombs and and everything else. So it's I mean it's 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 a game, but so it's so much more. It is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle that, that you have done. It's not, you know, it's not touching grass. It is really understanding what's going on and, and learning how to parkour and scaling things, finding uh, bales of hay randomly in the streets as you're walking around and diving into those. That is what I am offering you. All right. Go ahead, Sean. I'm not even going to add to that. <laughs> Thank you. This ten out. <laughs> hey, I didn't let him use it. Last I just, time. I just I had that in the plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I sure learning parkour is great and cool, and like you know, I would have loved to have done it. Um, and in my maybe it's not too late. Um, I don't know why I have to cut off a finger about it though. Um, and honestly, it feels like that would take away from my future parkour skill. I just think. Be, becoming so committed to this lifestyle to an assassin lifestyle for an, for a person in the real world is uh one one again doesn't seem worth it but even like encouraging that to happen already seems to be a problem especially uh, especially i have to take that stance because i'm here out here arguing that uh heated gamer moments are real and dangerous and bad already uh imagine that Without having the call mate, without having the touch grass mode, but are having the commitment, full commitment to this as a lifestyle. Sounds like a recipe for a disaster to me. Well, not not everyone can make it. Not everyone can pass the test. Right? You you've been selected, but it doesn't mean that you you've made it to uh take the creed. Oh, well, it's limited edition, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean look, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean only only the most dedicated will will do what is necessary in order to in order to wear this peripheral 
So I'm thinking of like types of assassins. Right. Um, what about ninja? What about ninja? <laughs> the streamer. Right. Well, well, oh, um, he's he's actually from right up the street. So I'll go ask him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. He, so uh, it is it's about like if your hair is green enough, um, then then you might be able to pull even the ninja assassin off. Um, and and instead of a, instead of a blade coming out, it would be a microphone. So, okay. yeah. That's uh-huh. that that would be that would be uh an add on that you know some DLC that you could buy. You could get the Ninja Assassin DLC and it comes with a microphone. Okay. Why is Sean Sean why is yours the better option? Uh I I also said uh it would cause something similar but not lethal. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. so you're you're kind of like stopping the lethality. Right. They're, you're trapped in a headset. Yeah, that would. If you don't somebody. calm down fast enough, you like your head is encased in a in a VR helmet, Justin. Okay, Cicero. Yes. Why is losing a finger worse than being encased in a helmet? Um, because you you had ten fingers. <laughs> And now you have nine fingers, right? Even if your head is trapped in a helmet, it's still your entire head. You still have all your eyelashes and your eyes and your nostrils and your teeth. They're all there. And if you calm down, you'll get out of that, right? You got to be pretty calm when your finger gets cut off. But guess what? Your finger's gone. It's not coming back. All right. All right. Um, yeah, I'm gonna call it there. Uh, I don't. I don't know how, Sean, but uh, I think touching grass takes the backseat on this one. I think uh, you know, lethality is permanent, and losing a finger is permanent uh, for the most part. Uh, also, he said that you would be a ninja or a, an assassin in real life. Because you passed the tests, which you would be looking and scouring the streets for hay barrels to jump into, which could cause lethality. So, uh, <laughs> yes. Cicero, you got this one. Okay. Just by a hair. Uh, <laughs> by a were, green hair? <laughs> yeah, by a green hair, I guess. Okay. I guess Le- I guess less was in the question just for fun. I don't know. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> well, it was less. it's less lethal than killing yourself. It's just you're just mm-hmm. losing a finger. True. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I have a history of arguing. I'm not gonna argue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it is one one. Uh, On to the Netflix announcement. I don't know if fans heard, but uh, Netflix did announce a Gears of War movie and an adult animated series. Which will do better, uh, Sean? You get to pick which you'd like to fight for. Uh, I'll, I'll argue for the movie. All right. Full feature feature length movie is on Sean's side which means the animated series, the adult animated series, is on Cicero's. Sean, why is the movie going to do better? Uh, all right, so Gears of War, um, it's about, um, you know, brothers in arms uh, taking out real gross aliens in real gross ways. Uh, it looks, it's like gritty and like brown, but it does look like really cool in its own way. Uh, and that means, and it's got like, weird monster effects so it's gonna need budget type of budget that tv shows just do not get unless you're disney and even then uh look at kenobi um so you need a movie style budget for the gears of war experience to be full on um needed um and that that's that's round one you just you just need the budget and you need movie caliber uh creators behind gears of war it's got a legacy and um you know, you need movie type people to kind of trim up a little bit of uh, that legacy, I would say. All right, Cicero, your adult animated series. Um, so movies are great, uh, and uh, they're they can be bombastic and and you know a a great way to spend two and a half hours. Um, but but series, 
give you a chance to really explore the world and explore the characters within that world. And that's what this animated series is going to do. Plus it's adult and animated, which means that all of the, the uh, fantastic things that you'd see in, in a film, right. Um, Assuming that it would be R rated um, in a film that, that will be created by CGI will be created in animation form. So they can go even further in animation and over the course of several episodes. So you've got two and a half hours to tell a story. Um, you're giving me six hours, right? If there are 10 or, or maybe even five, maybe five hours, if there are 10 30 minute episodes. So I now have 10 hours of, of a medium that allows me to go even further than a film can in terms of uh, explosions and gore and and all of the things that that w- go go to illustrate how gruesome and how desperate everyone is. Um, plus, I get the time and the space to really explore all the characters. It's a no brainer. The animated series is is going to be the more compelling product. Sean. Yeah, um, so I briefly uh, mentioned the trimming of the uh, Gears of War Legacy, and uh, I'm glad you you have gone in on the uh, spending more time with these characters. I don't think that, you know, like, I've played a bunch, I've played one through th- three and parts of four, um, so I have experience with this. Uh, and trust, and you can trust me when I say, like, we don't need to spend that much time with these characters <laughs> in this story. There's not much there to do. We don't need to be spending an extended amount of time with these characters. We don't need more of these just, like, bare-bones characters that are just, like, very basic archetypes with, like, really, like, just overused storytelling with, like, Dom and what happens with his wife and Coltrane, like, we just, and, like, Marcus Phoenix, who, like, even is this guy, we already have basically the best archetype of that, like, he's not quite, uh, like, Mandalorian, like, he's more, like, gruff and, like, uh, bro than that, but, like, we have this archetype already, we don't need to spend the extra time with them, what we really need is to get in and get out with our chainsaw gun, with our chainsaw guns. So um, go ahead, Cicero. The the first Gears of War in the marketing was it was all about a merging day. A merchant day, right? Like that was when the 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 things from underneath came up at the cog and they came through the earth, right? Well we can learn the story of what happened before that, right? As well as the story about what happened after that. And we can we can Hear the story of Marcus's dad, right? Which is alluded to in some of the games. And we can talk about the story of Marcus's son that we that we get to in, by the time we get to Gears of War 5, right? And then we can, you know, we can add the stuff from Gears of War Judgment. There, there's so much story that is there. There's so much world that is there that you can use to encompass a a series about gears of war it doesn't have to be about marcus phoenix it has to be about the that world and when you're given space to actually explore the world and and you're use and you use a medium where you can be as outrageous as you want to be you can really make something super duper compelling uh Sean, you get one more. Yeah. So the key to your war, Gears of War experience um, from the people, at least in my uh, group that I was in, was, you know, it was the gore or whatever. Like, we played through the main story or whatever, but really what it came down to was the horde mode. And, mm-hmm. like, that is the Gears of War experience. That's who trends to, tends to go there. Um, who's going to pick up and want to write for this type of property? It's probably not going to be the people that know how to pace either the lack of interesting story, in my opinion, of like the main story or pace controversially what you just went into with all these other main stories to hit and like try to balance that out into uh, like these side stories, make them the key component and balance that out into like um, a good flowing season of television either. That's just not it. It's 
not that it's too difficult. It's just not what like people are going to make gears for or watch gears for in the first place. I don't think, and I don't think we need to change the property in this way or that it's likely to be changed in this way when you can get in the essentials in a movie um, and get what everyone is there to love for. Not every property needs to be everything. Sean, I've got two words for you. Starship Troopers. Right? Great movie where that horde mode, there's a wonderful scene where they're at the fort and they see all the bugs and they're rushing towards them. That's your horde mode mo- mo- moment. Um, beautifully said. Thank you very much for that. You can have something like that on the show. But while Starship Troopers was a fantastic movie, I loved it. It's actually, seriously, it was one of my favorite movies. Um, it's an even better television show. Um, not a lot of people know about it. There was a one of the very first computer animated TV shows is a Starship Troopers show where they actually follow all of the soldiers from uh, Johnny Rico's squad. And there's like a, a cameraman that's from FedNet that that is embedded with them. And they go through all of these different campaigns. And, it's called uh, Roughnecks. Ru- it was called Roughnecks. Yes. Okay. Uh, the Starship Troopers Chronicles, and it was a fantastic show uh, that was short-lived, but super, super good. And I could see someone doing something just like that with Gears of War, with Netflix, with a Netflix budget, and the free reign to really be like with you know without being handcuffed by standards and practices. All right. Um, you got something? Do you got one more Troopers sentence? Is, Can you do Starship it in a Troopers sentence? is inherently a parody and a satire in a way that Gears of War never intended to be or can be read as. Uh, Completely different uh, scenario. Uh, I could argue that it could be because the guy that Not made it kind of is that guy. Then put in the text. All right. Um, God, I really think that you guys fought this very well. Uh, I'm pro both these, so it's very hard to pick and choose. And I'm not, I'm not partial to animated films or animated shows. So, um, it was an uphill bot- battle for you, Cicero. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you fought it valiantly and ended up swaying me. I think that yeah. the uh, yeah. the time that they can take. And the stories they can tell will really flush out, flesh out the characters and allow us uh, to really love them more for when Gear 6 does drop. Uh, I think that the movie will be bolstered by a two-hour runtime. And I think there's so much to fill that runtime with action alone and without the storytelling that they're going to be pushed for time throughout the entire thing. Uh, the show will be able to really do that without that handcuff, <coughs> like Cicero said. Uh, Cicero, that, that's a win for you. All uh, right. Are you guys ready for the blind fight? Yes. Yeah, I've got, got my, my VR headset on. I'm angry. I can't Mom's take it off. I'm lasagna. blind. Uh, yeah, well, right. Cicero's missing fingers. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, so, it's been 25 years. 25 years, guys. And Ash Ketchum is finally the Pokemon Master. The number one Pokemon Master. Right. And you believe it. It's been 25 years and finally someone has given it to him. So this is a hard choice. And uh, who picked that last one? Uh, Sean, you started, right? Yes. That last one. Yeah. So Cicero, you're going to get to pick first. Uh, it's it's not easy. Uh, okay. What makes a Pokemon master? Is it having an untethered collection of Pokemon? having almost all the Pokemon or all the Pokemon? Or is it sharing a friendship with those Pokemon? Make your decision. I get to choose? Yes. Okay. And not having as many, obviously, with the sharing of the bond. Right. <clears throat> um, Only if you say the magic phrase when you choose them. <laughs> so, uh, as a kid, before 
I knew of Pokemon. Mm-hmm. There was a movie that that I knew very very well, and and it was near and dear to my heart. And and uh, it was a story about a guy who was kind of out of place, but he knew his destiny, and he 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 worked incredibly hard to reach his destiny and he stayed focused um and he ignored his detractors and and he continued to work despite all of those people that the and and the obstacles that were put in 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 his in his face and in his way and he still made it out and he learned how to get the golden glow of course i am talking about bruce leroy from the seminal 1984 movie Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon and what we learned from that movie is in order for him to become the master and attain the golden glow he there was one place he had to look and in that one place he'd find it and that place was inside himself so it's not a matter of collecting it's not about collecting all the things it's about having the compassion to understand and really appreciate those that are around you. So it's about, of course, making friends with the Pokemon and having them work with you as opposed to just owning them and con- trying to control them. That is how you become a master. All right. Obviously, uh, we got Leroy Green over here. Uh Obviously, we've got uh, the collecting all of them or having the largest collection of Pokemon on your side, Sean. Why is that determining that you are the Pokemon master? Um, so there's another. Um, there, there are other um, lots of other stories in um, the culture about some that looks inward. Um, to find their strength and uh, to become like a, a a great person or a Superman, let's say. Um, and really, all I can think of when I think about that kind of story, if, if it's just looking inward for strength, um, is like some Randy and stuff that like just is distasteful to me. What is better for everybody than collective action? And what you need for collective action is reaching out to as many people as possible, as many Pokemon as possible, because they're people, they talk, they have, they have ideas, they have thoughts, they have feelings and needs that are unique to them as individuals. You reach out to them, you get them on your side, and that makes a better, a better for you, it makes life better for you and everybody involved. It's the only way to victory, in my opinion. Yeah, I think you just argued my point. No, definitely not at all. Because you need everybody. You're looking inward, and you're only getting a few a few people. You're get yourself selecting who's worthy to be on your team, who's got the heart to be on your team. You don't know what people have been through. You don't know who has the heart. No, it's, Every, it's, everyone needs to be involved in in this shared struggle. Right. Well, it it is, but it's it's not about accumulating them. It's about them making the choice, and and them understanding your mission and saying that your mission is now my mission. And I am going to work with you to accomplish your mission. It is not a matter of control. It is not a matter of you trying to sit here and you got to catch them all, right? You got to catch most of them. And then you got to understand them all. And when you understand them all, they come to you. That is how you become a Pokemon master. Right. Is when they seek you out, not you going out and seeking them. That's not what a master does. People, the students come to the master. The master doesn't go to the students. John. Yeah. Oh. It's okay. So go ahead. It's once okay. again, once again, when you're framing it like this, you're saying they have to come and agree to your ideas. That's the that's fundamentally where I have the problem here. You don't even know what idea is going to be the best idea until you go out and reach to everybody. Maybe you don't think that that Voltorb over there or that Slugma over there is going to have something necessary to you. And like, yeah, you could spend the time to do that. But if you're a heart and soul kind of person, you're going to follow your whims. And again, you're ultimately going to try them bring to your perspective. If you're collecting them all, you're got you have to brush 
in your quest to collect them all, you have to brush against every type of idea, every type of person, every type of Pokemon. And that's where Masterhood comes from, is what results from interacting with every single being. Well, yeah, go ahead. All right, um, I'm going to leave it to this. Uh, Both of you have great uh, efforts here. Uh, What is the mascot of Pokemon for both of you? Meaning like a Pokemon? Yes, a Pokemon, what is the mascot? Or like like the idea that we're presenting? Okay. No, 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 no. Just, oh. just uh, in for total. us as people. Yes, okay. as Pokemon fans, what is the mascot for Pokemon? Like, which Pokemon is it? Uh, am I going first? It doesn't you matter. Started, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I started, so I'll go first. I will say, um, Jigglypuff. Okay, and Sean. Magikarp. All right. This is what it's going to come down to. You guys are going to impersonate that Pokemon. And whoever does the better character impersonation is going to win. I think, okay. I think, uh, I think Sean disconnected. He thinks yeah. he's coming back. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, all right. He's got, all right. he's got, he's got, did you hear me? Right. Yeah. Yeah. We got to impersonate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, Sean, you're not allowed to laugh at either or, and Cicero is not allowed to laugh at, at either or at either, either okay? Uh, uh, okay. All right. So, Cicero, you are doing Jigglypuff. Yes. All Let right. rip. All right. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff. No laughing. Jiggly. All right. Okay. Jiggly, All right, cut. Jiggly. All right. And uh, you've got Magikarp, Sean. Beautiful. That's that's great. Yeah, I almost fell asleep. It's perfect. <laughs> 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 getting ready. Magikarp, Kurt. Magikarp, Kurt. Magikarp, Kurt. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> Cicero. Amazing try, but I think yeah. the splash of Magikarp's uh, fin just took him to the lead. Uh, Sean, you have won that. Uh, is that is that tie game? That, that is, is a tie game. Unfortunately, that uh, was bizarre. I don't know where I came up All with right. that. All right, I love it. it. I love it. I love it. All right, let me make sure I don't close Roughnecks because I'm going to look into that after we're done. Yeah. Uh, all right. The Metacritic score, right? I did something last week and I liked it. So I put this on standby uh, and it is a twist to the Metacritic score. Uh, Mm -hmm. Hopefully, Sean, you'll have better luck with it. Uh, It is the eight games of the Gears of War Xbox Total Metacritic score collection uh, that is included both the original, original first game and the remaster. Uh, the Ultimate Edition or whatever it was called in, included. That is eight games, one to a thousand. The Metacritic score is one a number in there somewhere. Cicero, if you give like 30 off again, I swear to God. Uh, <laughs> Cicero, you're going first. Okay. All right. Um, one to a thousand. One to a thousand. Oh, also, listeners, viewers, if you haven't seen it, it's Price is Right Metacritic mm-hmm. game. Uh, right. If they both are under, it's closest to the number. If they're both are over, same thing. Uh, that's how it's that's how it's played. So one to a thousand. What is your Metacritic total count for the Gears of War Xbox Metacritic scores? I am going to go five hundred and twenty six. Five twenty six. Sean. Um, I use the calculator, so that's. Yeah, calculators are allowed if you'd like to. Uh, 580. And Cicero, your number was? 526. The correct number is 689. Whoa! Yeah, a lot of 90s and 80s in there, uh, for sure. Really? Yeah. Uh, Surprisingly, the remaster, the ultimate edition of the original, got less than the original. 
but that's back mm. when they were handing out 90s left and right. right. So that right. makes sense. Okay. Uh, 689 is the total. That means, Sean, you come closest by a smidge. Wow. Uh, Cicero, you were off by more than 30 this time. Uh, sorry yes. about that. Sean, anything to say to your fans? Um, hey, you can believe in the heart of the cards. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh. Nice. 